The European Union and India agreed to seek closer cooperation at a virtual summit over the weekend. Previous talks had stalled over differences including tariff reductions and data security. But China's growing economic strength has brought the world's two biggest democracies back to the negotiation table. India is the EU's 10th biggest trading partner. Last year, some 65 billion euros worth of goods and services were exchanged with the EU importing more than it exports. Now, home to some 1.4 billion people, India is, of course, a huge market for the EU, whose population is only a fraction of that size. The pace of growth differs too. Next year, India's economy is expected to expand by almost 7%. Now, that's compared to just under 4% for the EU. Now, the EU is hoping for improved market access, especially for its car industry. The question is, will India soften its protectionist stance? That's a question I would like to uh, ask our correspondent, Nidhi Rai, who's joining me in Mumbai. Good to see you, Nidhi. Um, so there was this virtual meeting over the weekend, obviously because of the uh, COVID-19 restrictions. But what is India now at this point, and especially its Prime Minister Narendra Modi, actually hoping to get out of a potential deal? Uh, so the details of the meeting were uh, uh, were discussed on the lines that there will be a complete cooperation between both the nations on digital infrastructure, technology and movement of people. Uh, the last talks eight years back were stalled because uh, EU were EU was not ready to open the gates for Indians and Indians and Indian the Indian government wanted to send more people there, especially the workers, technology workers. Now the big uh, challenge right now in front of India is COVID and the vaccine and the support from the international market. And as we all know that India has supported South Africa's suggestion of opening the patents for the vaccines, which EU has been reluctant until now. So the biggest help which India expects and the Modi government needs from EU right now is to support their idea of opening up and relaxing the patent rights. But that, it doesn't look like they have found common ground. Uh, do you think that we can expect uh, further stallment of talks because of that? Uh, if, if not the vaccine right now, because the biggest challenge for the Modi government is the vaccine and getting other medical supplies from the international market. If besides the max vaccine, the discussions were about the digital, the transport, infrastructure, uh, how the EU market can be opened for some Indian companies, how the Indian markets can be opened for some EU companies. And there are other different aspects to the trade talks. Stallment, I don't think so, because it, it took eight years to open this conversation again. And after Britain has left EU, EU has become more... Uh, more they, have, they have risen to the fact that they need India, and India also has realized that they need EU. So I don't think so. this is going to stall again. Obviously, they, they, they have to come out with a way forward. So when you say the EU has realised that they need India and vice versa, what does India have to offer that the EU wants now? As you just said, that the Indian market is a huge market. And for cars, for wine, for digital infrastructure... And for a lot of uh, lot of AI, especially a lot of technology, a lot of Indian workers go to EU markets and work on their in, on artificial intelligence, uh, big data technology. So therefore, EU needs people and the market from India, which India has to offer. And especially China becoming a problem in this region, India also wants EU help to make sure that they are in a in a sweet spot. So therefore, it's a win-win situation from both the sides. All right, Niti Rai there reporting for us from Mumbai. Thank you so much.